Hello and welcome to another model building workshop. I'm Mr. Allen coming to you from Providence, Rhode Island. And today we're going to go down a, a different uh, pathway altogether. We're going to look at some figures from Mark's Toy Company. Yeah, uh, the Louis or Louis Mark's Company uh, produced a lot of fun um, toy sets back in like the 50s and 60s. And we're looking at Campus Cuties, which was a line of figures they put out in 1964. I think the ones you're looking at here are probably a reissue that came later. But in any case, they were designed in 1964. There were two sets. Uh, each set had eight figures in it. Uh, the other set, which I, I don't have, we only have this one, um, I guess is harder to find now. Uh, but I'll show you some uh, pictures of what that set looked like. You know, as we progress in this video. So the idea was that they wanted to try to compete with some new toy uh, things that were coming up in the 60s because they seemed like Marx seemed to dominate the 50s because they made um, play sets with toy soldiers and they depicted things like the Battle of the Alamo where they, you would have a, a backdrop of the Alamo. You might get you know, some soldiers with it and maybe some barricades or a cannon or whatnot. And they would sell these these sets, which would keep boys like riveted for hours, you know. But they really hadn't done much for girls. That's one thing they tried to accomplish with this set. And um, as things were changing with like the invention of the Barbie doll and a G.I. Joe, they wanted to try to keep up and this is one of their attempts and this is something they try to do for for girls which they really hadn't done before so this is a set called campus cuties 1964 and they were trying to create um women's fashion figures that girls would enjoy and they were trying to make it sound uh like educated and sophisticated by calling them campus cuties whether that works or not I'll let you be the judge as we go through these, um, but it is kind of interesting looking back in time at these figures now and see what kind of take you make from this. So this is the Lodge Potty, and <laughs> my Rhode Island accent comes out every time I say that, Lodge Potty, I, you know, what are you going to do? So this is a girl, looks like she's swaying to the music at, a, at like an outdoor or event somewhere. I think it's kind of a cute figure. She looks like she's dancing or swaying to the music, or it looks like she's looking at something in total confusion, one or the other. <laughs> but I, I tend to think she looks like one of the dancers in the Charlie Brown Christmas special, you know. Na 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 na, you know. Uh, that's kind of what I think, but um, I'll let you decide that. So that's Lodge Potty. I still can't say that. <laughs> And here we have On the Town. Now, my father had done these a few years back. And we had found these figures in a store. And, um, you know, if anybody's been in Rhode Island or Providence, there was a store called Shades Plus on Thayer Street, which is a kind of hip and trendy street that is right near Brown University and Rhode Island School of Design. And Shades Plus, well, they sold shades, you know, sunglasses, and they had a lot of uh, odd gifts. You know, they would have like greeting cards, they would have off the wall um, stickers, toys, candy, lots of weird, fun, funky stuff. Uh, unfortunately, it's out of business now, but it was one of those stores that was really popular with college students because they had all kinds of weird things in there. And I certainly enjoyed going there just to see what kind of stuff they had. And we found a set of these. Uh, and my dad thought, oh, I want to paint these. These, these could be fun. And I picked up a few because I figured some of the girls at the library might enjoy this as a painting project, which, which they actually did. Um, and we had some fun with them. So this is on the town because we're trying to do a more elegant type of thing here. So these are my dad's. Is once he's painted, and he tried to do this from his memories of the 60s fashions. So this is how he chose to depict them. This one here is Shopping Anyone. I don't want to make of these names. 1964, folks. 
So this to me looks more like a uh, villain from a James Bond movie. <laughs> that's the way I look at that. Maybe that's intentional. Maybe not. Hard to know what the designers at Mark's Toys were thinking when they made these. One thing to keep in mind is that the designers at Mark's Toys were most likely men. And then we have this one. Nighty Night. I don't know if I've mentioned, but there is there's two sets of these. Each one had a set of eight figures. I've only got one here. Uh, the other one apparently is a lot more difficult to find, and I'll show you some of the details of that momentarily. Okay. So that's Nighty Night. This one is Stormy Weather. So I've got the raincoat going on. I know we had fun with this one at the library. This one here, this one seems a little bit of wear. This is Lazy Afternoon. I find that an odd name for this. Lazy Afternoon, you're going to go, what, canoeing? That's not exactly a lazy thing to do, is it? <laughs> Looks like she's pretty ambitious to me. Um, so these are made out of a uh, kind of a soft plastic, not quite as soft as, say, like an Airfix uh, figure, but it is kind of a soft plastic. And, you know, while you can paint them, it, it they can chip fairly easily. And here's the color that they came in. It was this beige color. And then we have Dinner for Two, it says, is the name for this one. Now, I like the uh, the Chinese-inspired outfit here. I think it's kind of interesting. Um, I don't know if it's accurate for colors, but again, my dad was just trying to make these up as he went. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> So there's this one. And then we have On the Beach. So, of course, there's a swimsuit version as well. As to how these would be perceived today, good question, huh? I don't know. Be interesting uh, to see what you guys have to say about these things. And they're still available. Uh, these reissues are around. They're probably I've seen some on eBay, like the twenty-dollar-ish range for this set, or so, twenty to thirty. So intriguing. And I've got one here. You know, this is basically just in a primer. That this one was. That this is you know an unfinished one that was lying around. So I may try to do something with this. Yeah, so 16 figures in all. And so we can see the other group is down the bottom here. You can see we've got lazy afternoon, stormy weather on the beach and lodge party. I still can't say. <laughs> and then you get the other ones below from the other set, which I'm intrigued to try to see if I can find those now. Curious. If you can see those, I'll give it a second here. And again, let me know what your thoughts are on these, because I'd love to hear them. Uh, so the titles of these other uh, eight figures include Twist Party, Saturday Afternoon, Our Girl Friday, Night at the Opera, Bermuda Holiday, 
Touch of Mink. Huh. Again, 1964, right? Day at the Races and Belle of the Ball. Day of the Races, I just, you know, I can just make out that she's we're got some sunglasses. I don't know what kind of races we're looking at there. You know, originally I was thinking, oh, is that like horse racing, Kentucky Derby, or is that auto racing? Can't really tell there, but it's intriguing. So, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, they're a little cheeky in my opinion, but they're, I don't know, it it depends. I think some of these are kind of cool. But whether some of these others cross the line or not? Good question. Um, if I can say the ones that I did have, although I don't think we had anything, um, I don't think we had the swimsuit ones that we brought you know, to the library. But the girls did enjoy painting them. So, anyhow, these are Mox Toys Campus Cuties. 1964. So that's today's model building workshop. Again, love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> and uh, of course, model companies are still making things like this. Um, for example, his Hazagawa, and they're doing these 124th scale girls of the 1950s. What I find interesting with uh, Hasegawa, I don't know if that's intentional or not. I'm assuming it is. Kind of looks like that girl's Anna de Amos. I'm saying it right? The actress? Maybe not. But who knows? Wouldn't surprise me. And these are, I think I've shown you some of these types of sets in the past. But they, they come in like pink plastic pieces. And they have decals for their eyes and... Uh, this one actually has decals for the polka dots and the dresses, too. I don't know if you can see that or not. But anyhow. So they, there are stuff like this still being uh, being produced. I know, like, uh, Master Box makes some really interesting and definitely more questionable sets of uh, figures. So, anyway, there you have it. So, again, comments. <laughs> and we'll see you guys soon on the next Model Building Workshop.